Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. This video, I'm looking at WP Codebox. WP Codebox is an excellent plugin for creating and managing code snippets. It's now on version 2, and they've introduced a new feature the ability to save your code snippets as a standalone plugin. And that's what we'll be looking at in this video. This is the WP Codebox website. WP Codebox is a premium only plugin. There's no free version. And if we scroll down a bit, we'll see here is a list of some of the features. It has cloud storage for your snippets. So when you create a snippet, you can upload it to your own cloud storage, your own account, and then bring that down on other sites where you're using WP Codebox. There is a repository on WP Codebox with some snippets, and the number of snippets there is increasing over time. When you create snippets, there is a condition builder to help you focus in on where the snippet will be run. You can organize your snippets into folders. You can live load CSS changes on the front end, so you can edit your CSS in WP Codebox and see it live without needing to refresh the page. It has some error handling, some error catching features so that if you have a bug in your snippet, it'll prevent you from being locked out of your site and give you an option to go in and edit the snippet. The editor has autocomplete for WordPress actions, hooks, and filters. It also has autocomplete for HTML, CSS, SAS, LESS, JavaScript, and JSON. So you have all those code hints there for when you're creating your code. There's an API key manager, so you can manage the keys for your client sites. The user interface is built in React, and so everything happens instantly. You don't have to refresh, for example, when you save a snippet. You can load a CSS and JS from your snippets, or you can load external files. In that regard, CDNJS is a CDN that hosts a large number of JavaScript libraries and WP Codebox has an integration with that. And then there's quick actions where you can add a snippet to the admin bar. If we go down, we can see the pricing. It's $69 a year for a single domain, $89 a year for five domains, or unlimited domains for $119 a year. There's pretty good documentation here also. I have a test site here, and I've got WP Codebox installed, WP Codebox 2 version 110. And here's the admin here. WP Codebox has a large number of features. And in this video, I really just want to test out the features where you can create a plugin from your code snippets. So I'm not trying to show everything here. I will give a quick tour. This is the code editor here, the editor window. You can enable and disable snippet. You can save a snippet. You can upload it to the cloud. You can preview it or auto format the code or delete it. Here you can create a new snippet. And when you do, you give it a title, a description. You can choose which type of snippet which type of code you're using in the snippet, and then how you want to load the snippet on page load, just load it on demand, load it automatically, don't run it, use an external secure URL, and then where in WordPress you want to run it, and they're all the kind of common points that WordPress provides and the priority level. Then you also have a condition builder, so you can really focus in on when you want to run the snippet and where. 
All right, so those are the options there. There is an online repository. These are WP Cobox snippets, and you can choose one of these and bring it down to edit it or use it on your site. This is the settings menu. Here's your API key you know, for your license. You can upload and download your settings here. Set the font size, your editor theme. You can wrap long lines, show code map, move WP code box, the tools menu, get a prompt before uploading to the cloud and enable dark mode. You see there's two panels here. You have the option to have them, one on each side with the editor in the middle or to have them both together on one side. By the way, you can close this down if you need more room. Then there is a functionality plugin, and we're going to come back and look at this further. And then here you can search for your snippets. You have your cloud snippets. These are the ones that I created some other time, and I saved my own personal cloud account and I have these available that I can bring down. I did bring down these from the cloud. So this is the way you can easily access your snippets on different sites. These are the local snippets that are gonna run on this site. You see I have some security related ones like add security headers, disable the plugin theme editor, disable XML RPC, force SSL, I also have Google Analytics tracking code. I have remove WordPress emojis, a little optimization snippet, and then a helper snippet so that when you load an image into the media library, it'll set the title and alt text from the image file name. And then across here, this is where you can generate a plugin from snippets. This is the other kind of create plugin feature, which we'll be looking at. This will refresh the list. This gives you a toggle by each snippet so you can turn it on or off. And this is so you can create a folder for organizing your snippets. Now you'll see I have one kind of silly snippet here, which will make the H1 title text color red. If we look at the front end, we see that our H1 title is blue. But if we enable it and go back to the front end, we'll see it's now red. And we're going to use this silly snippet so that when we add our snippets into a plugin and at some point disable WP Codebox, then we're able to see that the plugin is working on the front end because most of these snippets here are code kind of back-end related, we'd have to dig into the source code of the page or whatnot in order to detect that they're working. So this is our little helper here so we can see and make sure that it's working. All right, so as I said, we're going to look at this functionality plugin option and the standalone custom plugin option. Before we do that, let's answer the question, why would you want to create a standalone plugin or a functionality plugin. This is so convenient. And I can think of three reasons why you might want to do that. The first reason is that these scripts are run from the database and loading the code from the file system is a little bit faster than loading it from the database. So you get a little speed advantage using a plugin. Second reason is that security researchers tell us that it's a little bit more secure to use a regular plugin than it is to use a snippets plugin. Why? Well, if a hacker gets into your admin, they can use this interface to add any code that they want. Or if the hacker gets access to your database, they could inject code into your site that way as well. When you're running your code from the functionality plugin, WP Codebox does not run the scripts from the database. And of course, when you create a standalone plugin and disable or remove WP Codebox, then there's no database loading of snippets that way either. 
And the last reason that I thought of that you may want to use a plugin over running the scripts from the database is if you're building a site for a client or someone else, you can basically create a white label plugin with your own name or organization name and you don't need to provide access to WP Codebox. You can totally remove it. So that is perhaps a little more professional and your clients then wouldn't be confused by coming across this code editor inside their site admin. So now let's take a look at these two plugin options. First, the functionality plugin. You'll notice I have all these scripts here activated. When I click on the functionality plugin, you can enable the functionality plugin or close the dialog. There aren't a lot of options here. So I'm going to enable it. And after that, we can disable it. We can download it or close the dialog. So we look right here, it looks like nothing happened. But if we go to the plugin folder, we see we now have the WP Codebox functionality plugin added. If we go down to the file system now for this site and look at plugins, we now have this functionality plugin. Here we have our JavaScript and CSS. We have our folder with our snippets, right? All of our snippets are here. These core files, they load the conditions and context. These are some WP Codebox helpers. And here, if we look at the plugin PHP, you see it loads these helpers. And then we have our snippets here. And so these are all of our snippets. If you wanted to, you could just comment one of these out and it wouldn't load. There is also this signatures file that WP Codebox has added. And WP Codebox cre has created a hash code for each of the snippets. And it uses the signature file to help detect if something's been tampered with. OK, so if we go to the front end of the site, we see that our code snippet to change the H1 is active. If we deactivate WP Codebox, the kind of core plugin, and go back, we see that this still works. So we know that our functionality plugin is working. So I think we would use the functionality plugin here so that we could test out our scripts and make sure everything was working. And when we were done, we disable or remove WP Codebox. So that is the first option, the functionality plugin. Let's disable the functionality plugin. Go back to the plugins list and we see it's been removed. Now let's create a custom plugin from our snippets. And you see it's listed all the snippets that we have active there. And we can pick the ones that we want. So I'm going to choose these that are security related in our little helper here to detect that the plugin snippets are working. I'll give it a title. My name for the author and we'll go with this version. And now I'll generate the plugin. We get the option to download it. Okay, so now I'm going to close this. I'm going to go to the plugins list and deactivate WP Codebox. We go to the front end, we see we lost now that our red text and it's now blue, so we know that there's no code running. Go back to plugins now, and I'm going to add that plugin that we just downloaded. And I'll install it. And we see here our site snippets, our description, our version the author. So we've basically created a white label plugin here. There is no 
WP code box. We go to the front end. We see that the code is working. And now if we go to our plugin list, we see the site snippets plugin. Here it has the CSSJS. It has our snippets as before and the helper code. Here is the plugin code. So this is our plugin header information and it includes then our snippets for running on the site. So just a couple of thoughts here as a conclusion. The WP code box options to create standalone plugins I think is really nice. You get the performance boost from running it from the file system. You get the security boost by not running scripts from the database and removing the PHP editor from the WordPress admin. Plus you can create uh, standalone plugins so you don't have to give access to WP Codebox to your clients and also so you can white label the code that you've provided to your clients. I really like the ability to create the standalone plugin. You have the advantage of using the rich editor of WP Codebox and doing your creation and testing of your snippets from within the WordPress admin. Plus, you get the option to save the code as a plugin. The author of WP Codebox is very helpful and available in his Facebook group for the plugin. The plugin is now in its second version and it's been steadily improving and getting better. As I said in the introduction to the video, this is a great code snippets plugin. It's just added a new fantastic feature. So that's it for this look at the new features of WP Codebox. There is a summary of the video available on the WebTNG website. I hope you found the video interesting and useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.